Um, when you look at Revelation 12, verses 6 through 17, second part of the chapter, it talks about Satan's hatred, and it uses the Greek word in that chapter, orge, which is speaking of an emotional hatred for the Jewish people. That is how to understand anti-Semitism. You cannot analyze it from the human perspective because it's not ultimately rooted in, in humanity. It comes from the fallen uh, angelic realm. And it's really rooted in a longstanding hatred Satan has for the Jewish people for the principal reason that God has decided to bless the world through the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. The scripture came to us through the Jews. And then God will bless the world through the Jewish nation. The kingdom is going to come to us through the Jewish people. Isaiah 2, 2 and 3, uh, verses 2 and 3, many other verses we could quote. And so that's that's how to understand anti-Semitism. It's Satan's attempt to obliterate the Jews so that the kingdom will not come. And that's why from the human perspective, it seems so irrational and illogical. And the reason for that is you have to source it in the fallen angelic kingdom. Yeah, indeed. All right, let's go to a PowerPoint that you provided us, thanks uh, to the gracious, also gracious nature of Dr. Randall Price, Zionism. What, what, let's go do a quick review on this. What, what is Zionism? Well, Zionism is basically the belief that the Jews have a right to return to their ancient homeland. And as they are there in their ancient homeland, uh, they are there biblically. God put them there. God bequeathed that land to them. And Aaron touched on it. They are there legally. Uh, he quoted Alan Dershowitz. Uh, there are no specific laws being broken, uh, either domestically or internationally. Uh, Jacques Paul Gutier, another scholar I'll make people aware of, um, in his 20-year dissertation, a Canadian lawyer that he did at the University of Geneva reached the same conclusion. In other words, you can say whatever you want about the Jewish people, but here's one thing you can't say. They're doing something illegal. So a Zionist is someone who believes Israel has a claim to that ancient homeland from God and even beyond that from, from the laws that currently exist. And then let's go to the next one. Jews living in Israel, are they biblical Jews? Because we know that's, that's the lie that a lot of people are spreading right now. Yeah, and that, that's, um, if you advance the slides one, you'll see the quote from uh, Stu Peters, mm -hmm. you know, uh, basically trying to drive a wedge between modern Jews living in the land of Israel and ancient Jews. And this kind of taps into something that we, the three of us talked about, me, you, and Tommy Ice on one of your recent broadcast the so-called Khazar theory, you know, trying to argue that the Jews living in the land of Israel aren't, aren't really Jews. And that's been debunked uh, many times over. I'll give you a name here, Bennett Greenspan, who's, uh, uh, you know, an expert in the area of genes, genetics. He says that argument has been totally disproved. Not only can you identify the Jews living in the land of Israel, as the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you can also identify them right down to the right tribe. You know, they know who the, the Levites are. Uh, they know who the Kohenites are. Kohen uh, is the Hebrew word for priest, uh, et cetera. So all of this talk by Stu Peters is, is, has been disproven a long time ago. Yeah, very, very, very troubling at a spiritual level as well. How about this next one? Israel as the oppressor. Well, <clears throat> that's what we see going on right now at the International Criminal Court. They're involved in genocide, says South Africa, who is known for killing Christians. <laughs> Scores of white Christian farmers being killed, tortured, and kept alive deliberately for days so they can torture them, rape their wives, film it, and then put a Bible on their dead body to denote they just killed a Christian. Uh, that's South Africa, who uh, has made a hero out of uh, terrorist, uh, racist uh, Nelson Mandela, they have the audacity to accuse Israel. Again, psychological projection. That's the red of the red-green axis, the Marxist side of the red-green axis, the red being the Marxist, the green being the Islamist. So here we go. Israel as the oppressor, really? Well, it's a joke because <clears throat> in 2005, Israel is the one that gave <laughs> that area back, you know, as a free autonomous area 
to the people of Gaza. I mean, what kind of oppressor would do that? And of course, that was in 2005. They had one and only one election at that point. They elected the Gazans, Hamas, and they turned that beautiful area of Gaza, which which was when you see photos of it beforehand, it's almost like a resort, uh, elite resort, beach resort, hotels, beautiful area. They turned it into a war zone with all of their their tunnels of terror, and they've used those to launch um, attacks into Israel proper, not the least of which is what started October the 7th. So, you know, that it doesn't fit the definition of what an oppressor is. Israel relinquished the area and her enemies took over the area and have used that to attack Israel. So, you know, who is oppressing who? Um, and unfortunately, these facts are not brought out and people are taught today that Israel is oppressing the Gazans. Hamas what is their true agenda? That's next on our on our list of things here on um, our conversation, Dr. Woods. Yeah, Hamas, uh, boy, that's an interesting word there. The Hebrew word for violence is Hamas. Most people don't know that. So it's an organization named after violence. And there's a few slides I have there related to the um, actual uh, constitution uh, charter, if you will, of Hamas, where they clearly say that their agenda is the eradication of Israel. Which is genocide. Which is genocide. And even in that picture there, you've got there on the screen, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. That's from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. What's in between Israel? That doesn't sound like coexistence to me. That sounds like an ambition for eradication. Yep, and here's one of Hamas's leaders. Dream come true, slaughter of Israeli civilians. Uh, and we have another one, by the way, today out at memory, where again, they're calling for the murder of Jews. And by the way, where is this coming from? Well, Madison, Wisconsin. We come back, we'll share that with you. This rhetoric is coming out of Madison, Wisconsin. Do you think we need to fear Christians, Christian Zionists? Our Jewish friends, our Messianic Jewish friends, we'll be right back. Well, I, there's a lot to respond to there. Um, I just find it interesting that the imam I, uh, that you just, the video you just played, it's interesting to me that he's citing the Quran. He's claiming authority from the Quran to carry out this jihad. So I want people to understand that there really is no such thing as a moderate Muslim. You're either a consistent Muslim or you're an inconsistent Muslim. But the consistent Muslims have authority from their own religious texts to engage in genocide against whoever they want. And they claim that they're getting that authority from Allah himself you know, via the revelation in the Quran. So the problem is not um, radical Islam, as, as people say. The problem is consistent Islam, fundamentalist Islam. The problem is Islam itself. And unless some way they go through some kind of reformation, which doesn't look like it's likely to happen, you know, the way Christianity went through a reformation and uh, adjusted some things, got back to original truth, Unless uh, Islam goes through some kind of re uh, reformation in the sense that they're willing to alter these Quranic texts, this problem is not going to go away. Dr. Andy Woods, his website, andywoodsministries.org, andywoodsministries.org.